what happened was on the way home from the moon, having finished my major chores on the surface of the moon, was the ability to look out the window. And that's a powerful experience, to see Earth rise over the surface of the moon. And I suddenly realized that the molecules of my body, the molecules of the spacecraft and of my partners, had been prototyped, maybe manufactured in some ancient generation of stars. But instead of being an intellectual experience, that was a personal feeling. Those were my molecules. And that was accompanied by a sense of joy and ecstasy, which caused me to say, well, what is this? And it was only long after I came back that I happened to do the research to discover that that experience in the ancient Sanskrit was called samadhi. That's life-changing. And it occurred to me that if the base esoteric experience is the same in every culture, then that's something that science should be able to get a handle on. And thus the beginning of the Institute of Nordic Sciences because it requires a shift in consciousness, a shift in awareness to experience that. And every mystical tradition has it. Our science has devoted itself only to that which is observed. And then when psychology came around to the process of observation, but our science has never devoted itself to who's observing. And a science that does not take into account the observer who is so fundamental to the observation, because without the observer, there would be no observation, is an incomplete science. We cannot call it a science. Unless we include consciousness, we cannot call it a science. Let's stop having the argument about, you know, how does consciousness connect to matter? How does mind connect to brain? Western scientists have been fussing about that since Descartes, you know, because that split occurred at that point, which was political, not scientific. There's nothing inherent in the scientific method that says you can't study inner states. Nobody ever said that. Nor did science ever say spirits don't exist. That's an assumption taken over from the Middle Ages. I think what most people think about when they talk about consciousness is they're talking about self-awareness or reflective awareness, the act of being aware. That's the mystery. That's, that's what the philosophers call the hard problem. But now with modern uh, cognitive neuroscience, we know that the large majority of what's going on inside your head is unconscious. And only a very small veneer of it is awareness, conscious awareness. In the land of I am, I am more than I have and I am more than I will be, I am all that I have. And I can feel the ocean moving on earth and me with it. I am the world and the world is me. We are one. My personal transformation transforms the world. It's just like food. Everything you eat becomes a part of you. Similarly, everything we think and say and hear becomes a part of us and therefore changes our vibration. And the smiles of all my unborn children and the dreams of a better day to come and the dance of heaven with the earth all And at that point, when that's cultivated, it's kind of like everything else drops away and nothing's there, but everything's there. The paradigm that the global ruling class has based all of its efforts and your future and my future and my son's future on, they now understand doesn't work. And they don't know what to do about it. To me, that's the hope of an institution like Noetics, to uh, f fund research, support thinking in this kind of developing worldview, where uh, 
we give leaders of countries an opportunity to think differently about the same problems. I felt that the dominant worldview was broken and my own personal worldview wasn't working for me anymore either. And the Institute of Noetic Sciences, I thought, represented an alternative to the dominant worldview. And for me, it became a catalyst. And there's no more valuable quest for human beings as a species than to find their soul. Because right now, what we're seeing is this chaos in the world is a rift in our collective soul. We've lost our soul. And the purpose of noetic sciences is to bring back the memory, because healing is nothing but the restoration of the memory of wholeness. In the land of I am, I am, more than I have in I am, more than I will be, I am, all that I have been robbed and disgraced, abused and displaced, been lied to. Transformation of consciousness happens together with transformation of culture. And then transformation of culture happens when you change the way you relate to the world. In the land of I am, I am, more than I have been, I am, more than I will be, I am, all that I am. It may be possible for us to apply some of the lessons learned in the past 30 years about mind-body medicine to an effective medicine for the planet as a whole and for uh, the body politic at whatever level you want to define it in ways that would be in fact profoundly healing and might even change the laws by which we govern ourselves. Right now, we need to transfer information, discover knowledge, and transfer this new information into the life of every human being. We have to create a sustainable civilization. <laughs>